When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. Hey everybody, Jerry Williams, aka Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. The other day, our old friend Todd Peachy crawled out of his spider hole and posted a link to a video by Kryptonite Physics called Living on a Rotation, mirrored by Taboo Conspiracy, who called it uh, Physics Ends the Heliocentric Model. It claims, like all these videos do, to use the very science they oppose to disprove the heliocentric model. People like Todd, who have less than a middle school understanding of science, always rally around videos that play dress up as being grounded in science because they don't know any better. And as much as they hate science for reminding them how little they know, they also desperately want to be scientists. So they hop on the bandwagon of anyone that agrees with them and uses sciency terms. That's this video. Now, I'm not going to go through all the points made in this video because it makes some very fundamental errors at the, at the start, and the rest is just compounding those errors. Excuse me. The general point of this video is to say that the motion of the Earth, the rotation around its axis, and its orbit around the Sun compound in such a way as to make them impossible to work or to go unnoticed if real. So let's get into the claims. The creator of the video starts off discussing what we are commonly told about the motion of the Earth, its rotation about its axis, and its velocity in orbit around the Sun. He goes on to say that the velocity of a person on Earth at the equator would not just be the tangential velocity of the Earth's rotation, but also the velocity of the Earth around the Sun, which is true. And he claims that the adding of these two velocities together through vector addition would make the acceleration very noticeable and impossible to withstand, which is incorrect. I find this interesting because he comes at this incorrectly in a number of different ways, one of which ties back to a previous video I made on this. First off, he talks about this being the circumstance of rigid body rotation and translation motion. I take no real issue with that. The problem is, with translation that has uniform velocity and uniform rotation, the motions can and should be considered independently. The linear motion of the entire body does not affect the centripetal acceleration on a point in the body. That's what physics says. And although we know this through experience, we all know that it's no more difficult to spin your keys on your finger while standing on the street than it is to spin your keys on your finger while on a plane going 500 miles per hour. The velocity of the plane does not affect the centrifugal force you feel you, as you spin your keys. And honestly, that's the point of my entire video here and the summation of why the maker of this video, Chris K, uh, is wrong. You can stop here if you don't want to see me get into the details of the errors that are involved. But moving on. Secondly, although I applaud the creator's use of vector addition in his work, I have to criticize his inconsistent and improper application of it. What he does correctly, he applies the tangential velocity of a point on the surface of the Earth to the orbital velocity of the entire Earth to get a new velocity vector. Supplying a link to a vector addition uh, tool is a great touch, by the way. Next, he comes up with a value for the acceleration between each pair of vectors. I take no issue with that. The problem is what, what he does next. He takes the acceleration due to the rotation of the Earth, the centrifugal acceleration, and adds them to the acceleration of that point on the Earth around the Sun between the same points in time. That's incorrect. The reason these two acceleration values shouldn't be added together is that they are based on two different reference points. One is the acceleration of the point in relation to the center of the Earth, and the other is the acceleration of the same point in relation to an exterior point, in this case, the Sun. You need to pick one or the other based on which reference point you are dealing with. The tangential velocity of the Earth's rotation 
is part of both acceleration values. If you add the values together, you are counting the acceleration around the Earth twice. That's why I said earlier that with translation that has uniform velocity and uniform rotation, the motions can and should be considered independently. That's what rigid body rotation with translation in physics says to do. So that's what should be done. All the bad vector application aside, there's also a, just a basic misunderstanding of how we experience motion. It has been said many times, and I have said it myself, that we do not notice uniform motion, we only notice acceleration. This isn't altogether true because we don't notice uniform acceleration either. We notice a change in acceleration, and we also notice the resistance to acceleration. When we are in a car and it begins to accelerate, we notice that acceleration because the acceleration is a change from the constant speed. Because the acceleration is usually uneven, and in addition, the, our bodies get accelerated in a delay from the car, so we notice the resistance of our body to the seat pushing against us. We don't feel the acceleration due to gravity when we're standing around. What we feel is a resistance of the ground to our acceleration. And I'm sure some of you right now are resisting this concept, but this ties back to a video I made a while back about free fall. When you're, you are in free fall, when the only force acting on you is the force of gravity, no other resistance, no other forces, you feel weightless. You don't feel like you are accelerating. You feel nothing, no motion. When you are in free fall on Earth, you are accelerating at 9.81 meters per second per second, and you feel nothing. Even if you were standing on a platform, you wouldn't feel your weight on that platform because the platform would be accelerating with you the exact same rate you are at a uniform rate. Well, guess what? When you and the Earth and the ISS are in orbit around the sun, all of the objects are in free fall around the sun. There is no change in the relationship between you and the Earth, and there's no change in the relationship between the ISS and the Earth, or the oceans and the Earth, because all of the objects are accelerating at a uniform rate together. The oceans won't gain or lose any weight. These objects are all in free fall around the sun. This brings me to my last issue with the video. It's a small but annoying thing. In speaking about how the new acceleration value that he calculated for an object on the surface of the Earth, which again, was incorrect, the creator of this video asks a question. To get an idea of the impact of this acceleration, fill a glass of water to the top. Now, move it three centimeters across the table in one, second. The implication being, if you try to move this glass three centimeters in one second, it would spill the water. And from that, you were to infer what would happen to the oceans on the Earth under this acceleration. But we all know if you move that glass, the glass would move, but the water would stay in place because the glass and the water are not being accelerated uniformly. The glass is being accelerated, but the water has inertia and is not being accelerated at the exact same time. Unlike the oceans on the surface of the Earth, when the Earth is accelerating around the sun, when the oceans and the surface of the Earth and the Earth itself are all accelerating at the exact same rate, they are all moving in unison. If I were able to move that glass and that water at the exact same rate of acceleration in unison, they would stay in the exact same orientation with each other until that acceleration changed. This is a fact. Want me to prove it? Okay. Here. As you can see, when I released the glass, both the glass and the water with it accelerated at the exact same rate and stayed in the exact same orientation. And this rate of acceleration is 9.81 meters per second per second, much more than the measly three centimeters per second per second the maker of the video came up with. And when the Earth and oceans all accelerate together at the same rate, their orientations stay the same. There you have it, folks. 
Kryptonite physics does a good job as posing as a scientist for those that think seeing math makes it science, but the work doesn't hold up under the slightest scrutiny. Maybe they should try a little less kryptonite and then their physics wouldn't be so weak. Okay, one last criticism. People like the creator of that video like to imply that if the motion of the Earth was real, the changing of weight at different locations would be a significant change. And with his bad math, he implied that losing 300 grams of weight in five hours would be significant. This was 500 grams of water, and I've been adding it to my mass over the last 30 minutes of this recording. I gain and lose more than 300 grams several times a day. Everyone does, and nobody really notices it because it happens all the time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go lose half a kilo. Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.